You're watching and listening to NBC's live simulcast of Elections 2017. While many public servants are going on holidays after yet another long and challenging year, there's one who will be stepping into overdrive and will continue working hard while everyone else is slowing down. Electoral Commissioner Patilia Scamato is a man who has this major task of pulling together government resources to ensure next year's election is successful in every way. Welcome to the program, Mr. Gamato, and thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. You have extensive experience with elections in the country and of course your recent anniversary last month. Please briefly tell us about your, yourself and what you were doing prior to this appointment as Electoral Commissioner. Well, before I uh, became the Electoral Commissioner, I was uh, the Provincial Administrator for Morobe. Okay. Um, and before that, I, was, uh, I worked as Deputy Administrator uh, for District Services and Local Government Council in Moray Province for over 13 years. Uh, but even, even before that, I be, before I became Deputy Administrator, I was the uh, District Administrator uh, in Lay District. And so I was responsible for um, looking after Local Government Council. Yeah, so in the, in the course of my duty, I was, I was uh, uh, running elections. Uh, I took part in elections as an uh, election official, mm -hmm. as a, as a um, uh, polling official, and then eventually uh, when I got promoted as deputy administrator, I was responsible for election, uh, basically chairing the election committee in Moray province. So those were my, my, my brief uh, experience in, in running election, and uh, eventually I became provincial administrator. Okay. Now, many Papua New Guineans know about the current voting system, which is the Limited Preferential Voting, or LPV, and the last system was the First Past the Post. Were there any other voting systems prior to these two? Yeah, I think the, <coughs> before the, uh, before the uh, First Past the Post, uh, there was a, a system, the uh, electoral system uh, that we, we, we followed. Uh, and that was uh, pre-independence, before independence. But uh, as far as I know, the first past the post uh, came about after independence and I came up. Uh, and then eventually around 2000, 2002, uh, we changed that from uh, first past the post to limited preferential voting system. Okay. So in 2007, uh, the limited preferential uh, system came in place and so 2007 was limited preferential voting, uh, 2012 and 2017 we are going to use the limited preferential voting system. Okay, now Commissioner, the election system of Papua New Guinea has evolved over the years. Your predecessor, Sir Andrew Trowen, had introduced the LPV, which will be used for the third time, as you've said, and not to mention several by-elections where it was also employed. There was also a slight change to ballot papers under the LPV system. How is the LPV performing and do you see potential or a need to replace this system? Uh, personally, I don't think, uh, I, I don't think uh, there's a problem with LPV. LPV is a good system okay. and uh, in my watch I would like to see the LPV system continue because it gives option to people mm -hmm. to vote. Unlike the past, uh, past the first uh, system, uh, you only vote one, one candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, for the limited preferential or LPV, you have three options. So you, the, the voter can have three options. Mm -hmm. All those three have equal power. Uh, first preference, second preference, and third preference have equal power. So I think there's a, there's a greater chance of people you know, choosing out of many candidates, at least three. So they can put their choice in one, two, three. Okay. The Commission has also been trialling various systems over time. In your endeavour to make elections efficient, effective and more transparent, there was a trial into the photo electoral role, a homegrown initiative, where for our voters and listeners, this is where election votes are taken with a photo. And the family order listing, which I believe will be used in parts of the Highlands region in the coming election. The Commission also introduced the electronic verification of the manual counting process 
employed, or should I say, tested in the 2008 Rye Coast by-election in Medang province. Can you tell us how efficient, effective and transparent these systems have been and what are the future of these prospects? Well, let me, let me first of all start with the photo roll. Uh, photo roll was trialled in National Capital District and in some parts of uh, uh, Central Province. It was uh, tried out um, because it was a it was a pilot project. Mm -hmm. uh, up to now, I've not given approval to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, in terms of us using the photo roll, there's still some issues, some challenges in relation to photo roll. So, uh, I don't think think we will use that. We will use the photo roll. Okay. We'll continue to use the electoral roll uh, without photo in the coming election in 2017. The family order in the islands uh, was used and I've not decided uh, to change that. It will be still used uh, in the islands uh, provinces, the family order. Uh, although there are some challenges, the challenges are mostly technical uh, because our system cannot adapt or cannot accept that. So. Uh, in view of that, we still use the uh, family order role because that is the role as it is now. Okay. So what our people are doing in terms of role updating, they're just updating the uh, role as it is in family order. Mm -hmm. So we will continue to use that. Um, the, the next one is, uh, what is your next question? The introduced electronic verification. Oh yeah, ele electronic, process. yeah electronic uh, verification. Um, that was used basically to support um, support uh, the, the counting process. Okay. Uh, by law, we are supposed to use what we call uh, uh, Form 66A and B. Mm -hmm. Those are regulated forms uh, under the election regulation. Uh, and so uh, the electronic verification was basically used to confirm the figures confirm the figures, so we will continue to use the manual. Okay. We will continue to use the manual under Form 66A and 66B because those are legal uh, uh, regulated forms. So we will use that. The electronic uh, counting is just basically to confirm the figures. Okay, so once the counts are done and confirmed, then the retaining of signs the Form 66A and 66B, and that becomes the official uh, result. Mr. Gamato, finally, what latest updates and developments can you advise the country of regarding the various preparations that the Electoral Commission is undertaking? We have taken, we have done a lot of things, I think, within a very uh, short spa space, space of time. Uh, in preparation for the election, uh, and especially for 2016, uh, our priority this year was to update the role. Uh, and as you may have heard from my my uh, earlier uh, statements in the, in the media, uh, on radio, uh, talked about uh, government uh, not providing us adequate level of funding to start a role updating exercise. Um, towards the mid of this year, middle of this year, around July, August, the funds started coming in. So while waiting for the funds, we prepared ourselves. And uh, by August this year, we started sending our teams out as we started receiving funds from government and uh, we have sent our teams to uh, conduct a number of trainings. Mm -hmm. uh, there were three levels of training. The first level training was the training of the election managers and assistant election managers. The second level training was the training of the retaining officers and assistant retaining officers. Yes. The third level training was the training of the enrollment agents. Okay, so those three level training was conducted. Cascade, we cascaded the trainings down. So uh, training manuals were developed and we trained uh, the retaining officers and enrollment agents. So the enrollment agents are actually out in the field. As I'm speaking across the country, about 50% of the work has been done in terms of uh, completing the field work. Uh, field work is basically uh, enrollment agents taking the form claim for enrollment, uh, that's form number 11, to, to places so people can come and enroll. And they were targeting three types of people. The first one is the provisional 
uh, voters. These are uh, youths who would be turning 18 on the eve of the election. Yes. Uh, second group are new voters who have not enrolled, they don't have a name on the uh, electoral roll. Mm -hmm. And the third group are people who transferred in and out. Okay, so targeting those people, they use the claim for enrollment of Form 11 to complete the data. Once the data is completed, they bring the data back. The, once the forms are completed, they bring the data back to the provincial headquarters. Mm -hmm. And that's where we set our computer systems. So they enter the data into the computer system. Eventually, it becomes the role. Okay, it will then become the master role. So for this year, we have uh, prepared ourselves for that. And uh, about 50% across the country uh, has completed their field work. They're now bringing the forms back into the headquarters. I've, I've got reports on uh, many provinces finishing their work now. So we're hoping that they can start the uh, updating, processing of the data, or updating the, the, the uh, data, data system uh, towards Christmas and Southern period. If they can't finish, then they, we, we go into January next year. Okay. So the whole month of January next year is just entering data. And uh, we hope that we can finish that work by uh, end of January. And then in February, we, we display the role for objection. The primary role will be displayed for objection. Okay. And uh, I'm hoping that by end of March, we should finish everything and print the final role. Okay, okay so that's uh, our priority this year. Apart from uh, updating role, there are other things that we have done. Uh, we are working on the National Logistics Plan. Mm -hmm. And in that National Log Logistics Plan, we are bringing all information about polling schedules, polling places, and costing them out. Our uh, requirements for the election preparation, like the big ticket items, uh, the ballot paper, the ballot boxes, mm -hmm. but those are the big, big name items that we have to prepare and get them ready. So we are placing orders, uh, and hopefully we can place orders by January yeah. and get, that, uh, get the big ticket items in. Uh, by March and get them ready uh, to dispatch to the provinces and even down to the ward level and to the polling places. Okay. Your uh, awareness program and information you had sent out shows us that the 2017 election dates, as our viewers will soon see on the screen, for the nominations to open and the issue of writs will be Thursday the 20th of April 2017. Then we have Thursday, the 27th of April, 2017, when nominations close, correct? Yes. Saturday, 24th of June, 2017, is when polling starts. Saturday, 8th of July, 2017, July 2017 is when polling ends. Then we have Monday, 24th July, 2017, return of writs on or before this date. And Monday, 7th August, 2017, is the return of writs for the LLG election. Mr. Gamato, thank you very much for your time. Can, can I just say something about uh, the tentative dates? Oh, yes. Now, these are the t tentative okay. dates that the Governor General has approved, and I've announced the dates. Uh, in view of the recent decision by NEC mm -hmm. to separate two elections, the national election from the okay. LLG election, uh, if Parliament approves that and changes the law, yes. then we will see the separation of the two elections. Okay. In 2017, we will conduct the national election, and in 2018, we will, 12 months later, we'll see the conduct of the LLG, LLG election. Okay. The other change is that uh, they've decided, the government has decided to um, propose to Parliament uh, for legislative change uh, to reduce the campaign period mm -hmm. from two months down to one month. Mm -hmm. Now, if that happens, then I will have to advise if the parliament approves that uh, and makes pass that to become a law, yeah. then I will have to advise the governor general to change the dates mm -hmm. and we'll bring it down a month later. You're positive with things? I think the government is adamant. Uh, and I think it's the intention of government and they've expressed that, yeah. that through the decision of NEC. Okay. So I hope they can master numbers to uh, pass and to amend the laws. Thank you again for your time. Electoral Commissioner of Papua New Guinea, Patilias Gamato. Mr. Gamato will be a regular guest on the simulcast as elections 2017 progresses. We'll return after these messages.